Today, we're gonna to be checking out five different awesome type-based effects from Blotter.js. Before we begin, I wanted to mention this video sponsor, Skillshare.com, which is an online learning community for creators with over 25,000 classes in design, business, and more. So whether you want to fuel your curiosity, your creativity, or even your career, Skillshare is the perfect place to do just that. For instance, you're about to watch my tutorial that uses JavaScript, but you could watch this full JavaScript course at Skillshare. Skillshare is also super affordable with an annual subscription of being less than 10 bucks a month. But if you're one of the first 500 people to click on the link here in the description in YouTube, then you get the first two months 100% free. So join up. Hey everyone, what's up? Gary Simon, of course, Cetro.com. So today we're gonna be checking out something called Blotter.js. Now, if you go to blotter.js.org, you'll see this page here. And it basically allows you to create interesting uh, and dynamic effects that can be uh, animated based on mouse position or any other number of things like scroll as well. Uh, if you go to materials here, there's uh, there's channel split material, which is the one that you saw at the beginning. There's also a flies material, and the documentation is pretty good. You can uh, adjust all these to see you know how these different materials behave based on the properties. So that's what we're going to be doing. I'm going to show you exactly how to get up, uh, get started using it. So yeah, make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and let's get started. All right, so here we are at the official blotter.js.org site, and um, as you can see, coming um, right here if we go to the main page right here we'll see uh, something quite interesting here very cool um, now what you want to do first I uh, will be referring to uh, the documentation uh, right here and uh, it's gonna tell you how to use these materials so I've already set this code up for demonstrating each one of these but you know if you want to learn more of course refer back to the documentation of course all right, so uh, let's go ahead and get started. What we'll do first is we're gonna create an index.html, uh, quick boilerplate with Emmet abbreviation, exclamation point. We're going to link up a CSS file. And you know, really, I'm not gonna be doing hardly any CSS. I'm just gonna, in fact, this is probably pointless, uh, but you know, habits and all. I'm just going to paste that in. We're just going to set the width and height to 100% and margin zero. Um, if you wanted to, by the way, what it does, the blotter JS and inserts a canvas element uh, based on, uh, you know, if you just want to target the body to insert into, but you could also uh, target any number of class names or whatever, um, like a div element or something to append it to. Um, you could make it 100% width and also maintain the aspect ratio. I'm not doing that though because I just want to keep, keep things you know very specific to just covering Blotter.js itself. Okay, so I will go ahead and forget about the CSS file. And then outside of that, uh, we need Blotter.js, uh, the, 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 uh, the actual JavaScript file. So if you come here to the GitHub page for Blotter, um, and I'll link this in the YouTube description, by the way, um, you can download the minified version. Now there's a CDN out there. I, I should probably just create my own with an old version that doesn't work anymore. So I'm just gonna do this route. Control A, Control C, copy all of it. We're gonna come back here. We're gonna create um, blotter.min.js paste that in save it and then we can just link this up um right up here all right so we're going to do a we can just put it in the head uh script source and that's equal to blotter.min.js and then you have to also import whichever materials you're using i uh, there is the CDN for these do work. So I'm just going to use those um, as we go. So the very first one that we're gonna check out is called the flies material. So uh, I'm gonna paste this in here. And by the way, all these will be in the, uh, the code pen demo, by the way. So just uh, understand that you don't have to do all this. If you go to Google and type in blotter, CDN, you'll come up with these links anyways. Um, so we're gonna check out the flies one. So the flies, if we come back here, this is flies, all right? So as you can see, kind of creates an interesting sort of effect that you have control over through all of these different properties, all right? So uh, you can see if you adjust these, 
how you can play around with them. So how do we actually integrate this into our project? All right, so we'll start with a script tag here. We're just gonna do inline JavaScript here. And we'll say, uh, first we have to create a text property here. So we're gonna say new blotter.text. And you do this, by the way, for, for all the materials, this setup process. So we'll just say, uh, I'm just gonna say bro, bro. And then we open up an object with properties. So we can specify the font family. Of course, I'm going to use Montserrat, which is something I have on a font that I have installed already. Size, we give it a size. I'm gonna say like 300. I fill, change the color, of course. I'm just gonna say black. And then also we could do padding left. And this gives padding around the text element itself. So um, shift alt down arrow key and just change these up real quick, right top and bottom. And there we go, very good. So that's not enough in and of itself. We still have to do a little bit of setup work here. So I, the next step, we have to create our material. All right, so here's how we do it. We first say <clears throat> var material equals new blotter dot flies material, all right? because we're using flies, we're importing it up here. It's the same name as this, except we have a capitalized F here. All right, and then we set material uniforms, and this is the same, uh, uniforms exists on all the other materials as well. And then we use the various property, name, property names that we find that are defined here. So we see uniforms, and then inside we have uh, U point cell width, U point radius, U dodge. And the values, it's gonna know these values uh, are either uh, for, for true or false, for Boolean, it's just zero or a one you specify. And the other runs, they're with exception to like rotation, which goes from zero to 360. The other ones are just based uh, between 0, 0 0.0 and 1.0. So you'll see how this works in a second. So uh, we could do U point cell width the value equals 0 0.01. And then we can go ahead and just replicate this two more times. There's a couple other properties like uh, U point radius dot value. And we'll say, uh, let's just go, this is another one that's between one, a zero and one. So we'll just say 0 0.5. And then also we'll say U speed. And again, uh, this is a value that uh, doesn't necessarily, I believe, go between 0, uh, 0 and um, 1.0, but you can read the documentation. After you have the material set up, though, I, we still have a little bit more setup work. Uh, but from here on, once we do this other setup work, all we have to do is adjust this stuff and which script we're importing up here. All right, so next, once we have the material defined and its properties, we say var blotter is a new blotter. We pass in the material that we just defined with an object and we say texts, it's bound to text, which is defined right here. All right, say var scope is blotter dot for text is text. All right, and then we simply say scope, we append it to the document body. And then if you wanted to append it to like a different uh, HTML element, you could use, uh, I get element by ID or query selector, etc. Um, just basic vanilla JavaScript, uh, JavaScript stuff right there. So uh, afterwards, I'm going to show you how to animate these as well based on like mouse position, but we're going to do that after we demonstrate these five different materials. Um, so if all goes well, you can right click open with live server. If you don't see that option, come over here to, to extensions, type in live server, that live server and then install it, reload, and you'll be able to uh, access this. It just opens a real quick uh, development server with live reload. And here we are. So now we could see, let's go ahead, I'm gonna split this up just so uh, we're not going back and forth from the browser and all that good stuff. Uh, so now we can see this is working and you could adjust all of these properties here to you know, uh, make it look different. So control B, let's get rid of that sidebar. So again, you know, if we change this from that value to this, these are very large now, uh, 0 0.3. Uh, maybe three. This is the size of them, of course. One is what we were using, zero, zero, one, make them, well, pretty much you can't see them anymore, but you get the idea. 
um, the point radius, and then speed. As you can see, you can make it go pretty fast. Very cool. All right, so let's go ahead and experiment with the rest of uh, the other materials. I'm not gonna sit here this time typing these all out by hand. I have them already pasted on screen, uh, on the other screen, and I'll just uh, make these all available, by the way, and comment them out uh, on the code pen, which you can check from the YouTube description. So let's try liquid distort now. So I, I'm i going to get our link here. We're gonna change this simply to liquid distort material, and then we'll change the reference to it from flies material to liquid distort material. Now this has three primary properties. I'm gonna paste right there. So you can see there are U, U volatility, speed, and, oh, sorry, seed. I was like, what is happening here? And speed. So let's hit save. And there we go. We have kind of just an interesting liquid distortion. And of course, if you adjust the, the uh, let's see, the, the speed here, we can go like to 0.9. You'll see it goes quite a bit quicker. Volatility will make it go extra crazy the more you increase that. All right, let's try out the next one. And that is, we'll do channel split. All right, so we'll take our channel split material up here. Paste that there. We'll change uh, channel split there. Copy that. Make sure that's uh, uppercase C. And this has four different properties that we can specify. So we have offset, rotation, apply a blur, which is a zero for false, one for true value, and then you animate noise. All right. So <laughs> very interesting. Um, we're going to make this particular one animate based on mouse position at the end. Uh, so what I will do there is just comment this out momentarily. Let's try the next one, the fourth one, and that will be rolling distortion. Uh, this one has a ton of values too. So uh, rolling distort material, we're going to change this and then come back down and we're going to Go ahead and I'm going to paste this in. All right, so here it is. You can see there's a ton of options from which you can experiment for the different values. I'm not going to go over all of them. Um, they're all described in the documentation anyhow. So if I save this, it's kind of similar, similar to uh, liquid distort, but it gives you some other options that you can really experiment with. Uh, cycle count. I mean, you can really make things go crazy based on how you're manipulating these different properties down here. Um, so let's continue on after this. The last one that we're going to check out is sliding door. All right. So I'm just going to paste in the properties right here before we import it up at the top. I, uh, we can see we have five different properties. Let's go ahead and get that pasted in correctly and imported at the top here. And look at that. So you can make uh, this sliding door also occur from the top. So this you animate horizontal is set to one to true, but if it's zero, it's gonna do it from top to bottom. All right, so uh, you have these other properties, of course, that you can really experiment with, like uh, the divisions and all that stuff. You have a ton of divisions, you'll see. Very interesting effect. All right, so let's I'm going to show you real quickly how you can actually animate these properties, any number of these properties based on something like uh, the mouse position. Uh, you can also do this. I'm not going to show it, but you can also do it by uh, the scroll position as well by getting the page offset of uh, X, for instance, for scrolling down. You can you can manipulate these these values. Um, I also recommend checking out CodePen and just type in blotter. You're going to find other examples that way. So to do this, uh, let's do the channel split. Um, material, although you could do it with any of these materials. You can animate any of these properties. I'm just going to choose channel split, uh, and I'm just going to get that re-imported up at the top uh, there. Make sure that's lowercase c. And so there we go. So how would we make this animate based on maybe like just the mouse position? That's an interesting, cool thing to do. Uh, so what we would do first is 
we're going to create a, a function. I, and we'll say on document though, on mouse move, uh, we're gonna we're going to bind it to a function. We'll just call it move it. So function, we'll say move it, pass in the event, and then we could start just updating these values right here. All right, so um, we'll say U rotation. Um, we'll get this right here. Material uniforms U rotation of value equals, and then you can do any number of uh, different math operations. To make it real simple, I'm just gonna say event.client x. That's the x position of the mouse, all right? Uh, it's just a, a numeric value. You can console log this stuff to see what it does. And we'll say, we'll multiply this by 0.1. So we'll save it and we move the mouse over. Now we're rotating and playing around with the U rotation based on the mouse. I, uh, we could also do other ones in conjunction like the U offset. We'll say by 0 0.001. So now we're changing the U offset. So of course, when you're, you're, you're trying to animate these and even if you're not animating them uh, with any, any type of interaction, make sure that you're using this correctly. Uh, there's a lot of times you can get to, uh, you know, overusing effects that don't really make sense or just look bad as well in terms of design. So really uh, do your due diligence in terms of uh, making these things uh, really worth their weight uh, because this is a big file right here. All right, so hopefully you found that useful. If you did, as always, make sure to subscribe. I'm always putting out content like this. And yeah, I will see you guys soon with another video. Goodbye.